guys, how's it going? So, the long-awaited results of my testing of this power jack inverter. Now, there's quite a bit of information here, so I'll go ahead and start from the beginning. But um, let's go ahead and talk about efficiency of inverters. When you buy an inverter, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, it could be modified sign, pure sign, could be low frequency, high frequency, it doesn't matter. Anytime you're converting one voltage to the next, you use an inverter, and that inverter has efficiency ratings. It also has standby losses, and uh, those are important numbers that you need to be aware of when you're investing in renewable energy if you're going to be off the grid. Off the grid, hybrid, it doesn't matter, you need to be aware of these efficiencies and losses. Because when you're sizing out your setup, you need to be aware that in order to convert what's coming from your panels into uh, domestic power, you really need to realize that there is a loss there. So while a 2 kilowatt array may be great and enough, if you're losing a third of it just to the conversion process, well, then a 2 kilowatt array isn't going to be enough for you. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, standby losses. Every inverter has a standby loss. That means that when the inverter is on, so the inverter is on right now, that means that when nothing is being used, and I can go ahead and unplug this, there's nothing plugged into it anyway, when nothing is being used, just to have the inverter on and in standby, it's drawing energy. Okay, it's drawing energy from the battery bank, and that's what we call standby loss or standby. You know, it's as basic as that. So every inverter has standby. It's basically ready to provide the juice that it needs. It's regulating the energy on the inside. It's got the capacitors charged and ready to go, and it is ready to shoot the power out anytime it's called on. So standby loss. Every inverter has a different standby loss. Some cheap inverters are really bad. They'll have 5, 6, 7 amps DC standby loss at 12 volts. Other inverters are really good and they'll have less than an amp of standby loss. Now PowerJack says that they have a less than 2 amp standby loss or standby requirement in order to keep the inverter on when it's not doing anything. Is that number correct? Well, every inverter from PowerJack is going to be different. I can only tell you what I've tested for the 5,000 watt low frequency inverter. But what I have here is I have an old, <laughs> very old ammeter. It's made in the 30s. But it still works fine. It works great. I tested it up against a digital ammeter. It works just fine. It really, really does. It's very, very accurate. So this is what I used to determine what my amperage levels were, okay? So, in standby, with the inverter not doing anything like it is right now, in standby it uses about 2.1 amps. That's 2.1 amps at 12 volts DC. So it's taking 2.1 amps per hour, this is one hour of time, it's taking 2.1 amps of energy from my battery bank and it's drawing it to the inverter. Even though the inverter is not doing anything, that's the standby loss. 2.1 amps, it actually, as far as I'm concerned, is actually uh, a pretty decent. So, let's put that 2.1 amps in perspective. Let's say you have a 100 watt solar panel at 12 volts. You're bringing in about, let's just say, 5 amps in direct sunlight. Just to have the inverter on, you're taking almost half of that solar panel. That's if you have a 100% charge efficiency. We're just talking about what it actually takes from that solar panel just to power on the inverter. So that's something to be aware of. That's, you know, that's right around 40 watts, uh, if you want to look at it from wattage point of view. It's right around 40 watts. So let's just say 40 watts of energy out of that 100 watt solar panel is being used just to power on the inverter in standby. So let's say you've got a fridge or something else that's not on all the time, and you've got a solar panel that's charging a battery. You need to be aware that just having the inverter on is going to drain the power even though the fridge isn't running. Okay, so that's real, real important that you know that number. Uh, like if you are running that fridge, anything that's not running constantly, like maybe um, a, a, a heater uh, of some kind. Let's say you've got a much larger battery bank, you've got a heater like this. It doesn't run all the time, but 
the inverter is still drawing energy from the battery bank even though nothing is being powered so that's something to be aware of now again I can't speak for all power jack low frequency inverters and I do know that they have gotten better over the years about standby losses a couple years back there was a gentleman on one of the forums who was doing a, uh, a review and he found that the standby loss was almost four amps I'm definitely not getting a four amp standby loss I'm getting about a 2.1 amp approximately 2.1 amps per hour standby loss <clears throat> so let's put that into yet another perspective for me I have a 500 amp hour battery bank here 12 volts it's 500 amp hours and I'm only drawing 20% of that 500 amps before I shut the system down I'm not going any further than 20% death of discharge okay so I'm able to uh, in theory um, 50 amps total okay so in theory I can run off of this battery bank if the batteries are fully charged in theory I could run this for about 20 hours in standby before it hits 80% depth of discharge on the battery bank. So for 20 hours without any recharging, I could have the inverter on before I would need to turn it off based on my own personal preferences, okay? So that's something to think about. <clears throat> so hopefully you would get sun during the daytime unless it's raining or something like that. So that 20 hours, you know, it, it's just uh, hopefully the, by the time the batteries would get to 80%, you'd get some sun or sun charging and you'd be able to charge them back up. So, for me, 20 hours maximum is what I can have this on without any sunlight at all, okay? Now, what about efficiency rating? Now, efficiency rating is pretty simple, okay? It is how much energy does it take from your battery bank to produce the output voltage of the inverter. So, the inverter is taking DC volts, which in this case is 12 volts, it's taking 12 volts, it's converting it to 110, which actually it's converting it. This particular inverter, I don't know if it's just the way it was set up, this particular inverter is converting it to about 119 volts, okay? So let's just say 120 volts, okay? So how many uh, amps does it take to get from 12 volts to 120 volts? Well, in a perfect world with an inverter, a perfect 100% efficiency rating, you would get 12 volts times 10 amps to bring you to 120 volts, okay? It takes exactly 10 times the amperage from the battery bank to produce the amperage that you want from the output, okay? Or to the output. So, let's just say that I have a 1 amp AC 120 volt draw. It would take 10 amps in a perfect world to produce that 1 amp. 10 amps from the battery DC to produce that one amp AC at 120 volts. It's exactly 10 times, okay? So you take your voltage, whatever the voltage of the battery bank is, and how many volts does it take to get to 120 volts? So let's say you had a 24 volt battery bank, a 36 volt, 48 volt, it doesn't matter. If it's 48 volts, how many volts does it take to get to 120? And that is your uh, ratio, okay? Unfortunately, most, if not all, inverters are really bad at efficiency. Very, very expensive, let's say, whole house inverters are really good. They're usually around 98% efficient. Um, but when you're talking about something that's cheap, let's say a modified sign inverter that you can go pick up at your local Walmart or whatever, they're probably going to be around 70% efficient. So you're losing 30% of the power from the battery bank in order to generate what you're trying to generate uh, power with the AC on the AC side, okay? So, how efficient is this particular inverter? Well, surprisingly, it's uh, as good as they say it is. I'm actually quite shocked that it is. PowerJack, they claim that this particular inverter is around 88% efficient. It says 88 or greater, okay? So, 88% efficient, which means that I'm losing 12% of the energy from the battery bank to produce 120 volts. So, if I have a 1 amp AC out, 1 amp at 120 volts, then it's taking 11.4 uh, amps from the battery bank to produce that 1 amp on the AC side, according to PowerJack, all right? So, what are my actual findings? What have I found out? Well, it's actually real close to that. 
I'm getting between 86 and 90 percent efficiency. I'll explain why there's a range there. But so when I have, uh, I had a 100 watt uh, light bulb that I had plugged into this, and uh, I was uh, pulling about 115 watts of energy from the battery bank with that 100 watt light bulb. Then I plugged in a 1500 watt heater which actually runs at about 1300 watts. Again, this is approximate. These aren't scientific hardcore numbers. This is approximate. This 1500 watt space heater here actually pulls about 1300 watts maximum. So I waited for it to heat up and I found out that I was getting about a 90% efficiency rating with that uh, space heater, okay? So the more that you draw off the inverters, they typically get a little bit more efficient as you draw more energy from them. If you've just got a 100 watt light bulb that you're drawing off this, it's not gonna be very efficient. But you really start to crank out what you're uh, drawing from it and the efficiency does go up, okay? So I will say that the, uh, the inverter does meet or exceed what PowerJack says that it does. It quite honestly does. Uh, I'm rather surprised that it does. But so you're going to be looking at with the power with this particular power jack inverter, you're going to be looking at a minimum of 85% efficiency up to about 90% efficiency. That number is very, very important because let's say that refrigerator of yours is drawing exactly 200 watts AC, you're going to need to know that you're going to have to draw an additional 15 to or 10 to 15 percent of that 200 in order to power the fridge so that's what the battery bank's going to have to do in order to power that fridge so this is really important that you know these numbers because if you're thinking about getting into the off-grid uh, area of renewable energy you need to know what your standby loss is and you need to know what the efficiency rating is of the inverter now most people will say it's better to go with 24 volts uh, to 120 volts it's more efficient well Unfortunately, 24 volts, if you actually want to have emergency power, 24 volts, uh, there are not too many uh, inverters, there's not too many uh, appliances that will actually run in 24 volts. You can see here that I've got this as a great emergency backup. So I can actually plug a DC heater into this and get emergency power, um, you know, whatever. It's it's cheaper to get 12 volt appliances than it is to get 24 or 48 volt appliances. Now it is more efficient to go with a 24 or 48 volt setup, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about sustainability here and emergency backup. So again, to each their own. I'm just giving you the numbers that I have found using my old clamp on amp meter to, to figure out just how efficient this inverter is uh, what its standby loss is, and overall, I consider it to be a decent inverter. Now, some of you who have been following my channel for a while would know that uh, I did have a Royal Power inverter until it failed on me, and that inverter was about 92% efficient. Uh, so it did beat the efficiency of this particular inverter, but that Royal Power inverter was also the same price as this 5,000 watt inverter, and that was just a 1,000 watt high frequency pure sine wave inverter. So I'm willing to accept that 2% loss for the price of this plus the output. Uh, so anyway, hopefully those numbers haven't been too confusing. I'm gonna give this an overall A for what they say. Uh, it's not the most efficient inverter out there on the market today, but it's definitely not the least. It puts out the pure sine wave that they claim that it puts out. It's as efficient as they claim it is, and the standby loss is right about where they say it is. So, believe it or not, PowerJack is actually honest about those numbers. <laughs> as far as the output goes, uh, putting out that 5,000 watts, well, uh, I'll have another video for that. Let's just say that I'm less than impressed with those numbers. But, as long as you don't push this thing to its absolute advertised limit, then you have a really good inverter on your hands. And uh, as long as you also keep this fan running, which I figured out what this switch does, thanks to a YouTube user who follows me, this uh, controls the fan, always on or always off. Well, actually, it's, it's got a thermal sensor inside that supposedly um, comes on when it gets warm. But uh, I just keep it on all the time. I don't want to take any chances. So, 
anyways, if you have any questions for my test results of what I've found with this inverter, let me know. If there's anything particular you want me to test, let me know. Uh, I'll do my best to answer those questions, but I will give a thumbs up for uh, to PowerJack. Uh, in the past, I think they've really been tarnished by the fact that they they really started out super cheap, and I don't think they really knew how to build inverters. And over the years, I think they've gotten a lot better. That's not to say that the inverter that you get is going to be stellar, because I've already gotten a few comments on a couple of my videos on this particular inverter, people complaining about them, and I've seen plenty of complaints about these inverters. Cross my fingers, knock on wood, I haven't had any problems so far, but I have yet to push this thing to its absolute limits, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Again, any questions, let me know. Take care, guys.